Hello, in a previous video screencast on this YouTube channel, we showed you how to use SPSS to carry out Monte Carlo simulations. That is, studies where you create artificial simulated data sets with known properties and a large number of them. In this example, we created a thousand simulated data sets, each with 50 participants. And the data set looked like this. It had a subject ID from 1 to 50 in each of 1 to 1,000 simulations, known as stim, sorry, sim study underscore num. And the first 25 participants in each simulation were in group 1. And if we scroll down, we will see that 26 onward were in group 2. And for each participant, there was a single simulated DV, simulated using a standard random normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one and importantly there was no difference between the dv formula it was the same dv simulated for participants in group one and group two so there was no difference expected between groups one and group two so we can now go on to show you how to analyze these data sets all a thousand of them and to capture the output not just as normal in the SPSS output window but actually capture it into an SPSS data set itself so that you can analyze the results of the analysis and we're going to use a, a utility in SPSS called the output management system and it's a, available from a drop down window just to remind you this was the scenario we were trying to re replicate a paper in 2014 by David Cahoon or Kaloon uh, in Royal Society Open Science. And he, this is the paper. He did the simulations, the Monte Carlo simulations in R, and this is what he was uh, showed for his simulation, very similar to ours, top of page five. Here's the results. He did 100,000 simulations with no difference between the two groups, and he had 16 participants in each group. He showed that the mean difference between the two groups across the 100,000 simulations was zero, following a, a nice T-shaped distribution. And he analysed each of these 100,000 with a T-test, between groups T-test, and showed that the distribution of the obtained P-values, given that there was no effect, was uniform between zero and one. All values of P were equally possible. Uh, and we're going to reproduce that result using our data set in the, using the OMS output management system in SPSS. So to do that, the first step is to, to take our data and we're going to split the file. We're going to split it by the simulation study number because we want to do each analysis separately on each simulated study. So we're going to do a t-test now, and we'll do a, a thousand of them, because there are a thousand simulated data sets in this one file. And it will produce an output for each of those thousand. But we want to capture it, not only in the output window, but as a data set. So we activate the OMS control panel. It looks like this. It's, it's very nice and simple. So we want to get the tables from our analysis. We want to do t-tests. We're going to go to the t, drag it down to t-test. We want a particular kind of t-test, independent samples t-test. We're good to go, almost. And we want to create a new data set with the output. So I'm going to call that new data set multiple underscore t-tests. Sav. Terrible typing. Right, I'm going to add that to the output management system, I'll make a request for that to be done, and I'm going to uh, log it. Okay, and it says that there's one request being created. Okay, that we're ready, we've set it up. Now we return to the data set and if we run our analysis, anything we can do anything, but when we run an independent groups t-test, it will send the outputs 
to the OMS and that will in turn will send it to that SPSS file that we've created, given a name for. So we need to analyze compare means independent t-tests and we're going to look at the dv as our test variable and our grouping variable is called group and it has groups with values one and two so we set that up and then we just run our analysis okay takes a while to run because it's running it a thousand times when we can see in the bottom hopefully you can see it's running t-test um, with the OMS active it's not produced any output yet it takes a while to happen and now it's producing output so we have to wait for that to finish okay it's now finishing and it's pretty out it's got to a thousand that's that's good so now we go back to our data set go to utilities OS control panel and we can end the logging that we've done OK and it's finishing the request and we'll see it created a third data set which we've got over here here it is I'm going to save it I've saved that data set, I could have called it multiple ttest.sav, left it at that, I give it a more explanatory name. And now you see, there are two lines, two table number, one, one, two, two for each of the thousand. If we go to the end, simulated data set, it's right at the end, is a thousand, which to the top, and on each line we see the various outputs from the t-test procedure are separate variables. This is the F test and its significance value for the Levine's test. The variables have got names, if you hover, we'll see them. This tells us whether it's appropriate, if this is not significant, to use the equal variances assumed version of the t-test. If it is significant, we'd be safer using the equal variances not assumed version. We're going to use the equal variances assumed version because our data had the same variance in each of the two groups. It's consistent with these non-significant tests. Uh, in most cases, some will be significant by chance. So we want to select this line. So first thing we have to do is select this line from each of the two lines produced for each uh, analysis. So we're going to use var2 and we're going to select if variance equal variance is assumed. So data, select cases. And we're going to select if var2 equals equal variances assumed. Continue. OK. So now go back to the data set here and we see every second line is filtered out which is good now we're in a position to produce some histograms let's first of all produce a histogram of the mean difference between the groups and there's a nice variable mean difference here which is what we want so we're going to do graphs i prefer the legacy dialog for the histogram which i'm going to use so i'm just going to use the mean difference as my variable and put plot a histogram okay uh, that and we see we get a nice t-shaped distribution the mean is very close to zero and we can see we've reproduced Cahoon's result now we're going to see if we can produce his distribution of p-values result so again we go back here we run a graph legacy dialogues histogram I'm going to swap the variable. We're now going to do the t-test significance, two-tailed. We're going to plonk that there and run that histogram. And if we scroll down, we see we get a nice flat uniform histogram with a mean of 0.5, which is between the mean of between 0 and 1.
as expected, reproducing nicely the result that Cahoon got. His is flatter because he used 100,000 samples, so it's, it's uh, more representative than our analysis, which was based on just 1,000 samples. But in principle, we've done the same thing. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, it's just a powerful tool within SPSS for capturing analyses as a data set.